Flow by Mihaly Sixcent Mihaly. Sixcent Mihaly, I'm probably butchering that name, but it doesn't matter. He spent the major part of his life studying what makes people enjoy what they're doing. He concluded that the overall fulfillment that people experience correlates with how much time they spend in activities that produce what he calls flow, a state of complete involvement. You are one with the task at hand. You're 100% present and in the moment, you might lose track of time. Hi and welcome to the book lab. I'm Bjorn and this is the place where we bring you the best book recommendations when it comes to philosophy, psychology, human nature and human potential. And today we're talking about flow, the psychology of optimal experience by Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. And this book will go through the components that make up flow, how you can get more flow in your everyday life and work and also how to deal with stress and other inhibitors of the flow state. Sixth Mihaly, he mixes research, anecdotes and practical advice in this book and it turned out to be one of the most enjoyable reading experiences that I had this year. We need to stop looking at the brain as a tool for problem solving and maybe look at it more as an organ for enjoyment. Doing this will uncover a world that is full of opportunities to experience flow. But what is this flow that I'm talking so much about? Well, there's eight components to it. To reach a state of flow, there are a few things that need to be in place. You need a clear goal, immediate feedback. What you do needs to be in balance with what you can do. Uh, for example, it needs to be challenging, but it can't be overwhelming. The task needs to demand concentration and focus. You are absolutely present. You also experience a sense of control. There is no ego involved. There is, um, you're not thinking about the future. You are here and now, and it's a transcendent experience. And as the eighth component is a sense of time being warped. It's like time adapts to the experience and not the other way around. And here's a quote for all of us book nerds, quote, one of the most generally reported flow experience around the world is simply reading, reading good books. So let's talk about flow and creative routine. Discipline and routine might not be two words that you immediately associate with creativity, maybe even the other way around. But in fact, having a good routine that is predictable, uh, that really gets your Creative uses flowing is one of the biggest assets if you don't want to get stuck in a creative rut. The French philosopher Rousseau, he had a routine where he went out in the courtyard, he took off his wig and let the sun literally warm up his mind. And he sat there in the sun warming up and when he felt that the thoughts started to flow, he went back into his study and he started to write. Philosopher Immanuel Kant, he used to sit in his study, stare out the window, looking at the reflections of the sun uh, on a church spire a few, a few blocks down from there. And this activity put him in a kind of a hypnotic state. This little routine, this little ritual was actually a prerequisite for him to give birth to his revolutionary ideas. I can't compare to these guys and their level of thoughts, but I'd like to share uh, some of my own examples of how, I uh, how I've implemented ideas like this. And I have one ritual that I uh, do for writing book reviews and it's yet to fail me. What I do is that the night before uh, I write the review, I read through all my notes from the book. This is a way for all my thoughts to formulate in my mind, I guess, marinate a little bit in my unconscious over the night. And then I wake up in the morning, I sit down, I'm ready. I put on a timer for 40 minutes and I tell myself, okay, I'm going to write the re uh, review during these 40 minutes. It can be shit. It can be super bad. It doesn't matter, but it has to be done when the timer goes off. It's fine for me to polish the text and wordsmith and reorganize things afterward. But when the clock rings, 
then I should be done with my draft and that that's it. Every time I do this, I, I, I get something out. I never get stuck. I lower the pressure on myself because I tell myself that it can be shit. And eventually it's not that bad or it's not super sucky at least. Uh, so this is a process that I've used. Uh, it works. It uh, eliminates procrastination. And yeah, I just thought I wanted to share that. Quote, it's not what you do, but how you do it. End quote. Turn everything into a game. One of the most important mindset that I have adopted in my lifetime is to see life as a game. One of the major attractors of video games is that it provides player autonomy while still maintaining very, very clear goals. Uh, you get immediate feedback from your actions and your character constantly evolves. Life doesn't always provide this. Once you start to look at life as a huge open world role-playing game with missions, uh, character specs and skill points to be gained, then you might start to enjoy it more. Or maybe the result would be that you lose interest in video games because they just feel like a bleak imitation, a bleak copy of the game of life. So this book made me take this mindset of life as a game and take it even further to see even smaller tasks as maybe mini games in the grand game of life. And I'm currently experimenting with how, how, how I can take this further to get more flow in my own personal life. To be honest, I didn't think I would get much out of reading this book because I've seen it quoted. I've seen the research cited in 10, 20 other books that I've read, but boy, was I wrong. I was also wrong about the nature of this book. I expected it to be very technical and theoretical, but instead I found a book that was very accessible and practical. Uh, this is one of those fundamental books that really will help anyone who's seeking out the good life. It has made it onto my great books list. This is, a, this is a list where I collect like the best of the best of the best books that I've read out of hundreds upon hundreds of books. These are the few, the few fundamental, the most important books that I've read. I, I'm going to link to it below. And this one made it right onto that list. So check out Flow. Even if you think that you know the concept, this will deepen your understanding of it. And it's also, as I said, surprisingly practical, something that I really enjoy in books because, hey, we can't just mentally masturbate all the time. So after you smash the subscribe button, go order Flow. And one more thing. I have a few books that I'm reading and starting to read now that I wanted to share. I just got You're Not Listening. This was, this was recommended to me by my friend on Instagram. Ras Piratas, I will link to his account below. He has great books. Uh, I also wanted to dig into the, art, the War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. I really liked his book, Turning Pro, which I reviewed a while back. Uh, so, but it, this is like the, the real classics. I really want to dig into that one. I just finished <laughs> The Comfort Crisis. This is potentially one of my book of the year. It's a book of the year candidate. It's super good. A surprise hit. Uh, if you liked uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, this is not similar in any way, but touches some of the same topics. After you read this, you really want to go out and be uncomfortable. Anyway, I should uh, just say bye. See you on Thursday for more book reviews. Bjorn out.